Hello and welcome back to Tasha Could Make That. Today is a highly requested tutorial how to make a matching fabric covered belt for your vintage dresses. Of course, there's several ways to sew a belt, but in this tutorial, I'm showing you my favorite way and the secret to making it one of the fastest and easiest ways to make a matching belt for your dresses. Plus, I'll give you links to all the supplies mentioned in this video in the description. Now let's make a belt. The secret to this super fast way to make a belt is belt backing or belting. It's something that used to be a lot more readily available, but you can still find it. You just have to put on your Sherlock Holmes hat, which I did for you. You're welcome. Since the place that I've bought it from in the past is in the New York garment district, and it requires you to actually call them to place an order since they don't have an online shop. So I figured you'd like some online options too. If you can't find belting, keep watching anyway, because I'll also offer a tip on an alternate construction method in a little bit. Belting is shiny on the backside and it's basically a very tightly fabric covered plastic. It's different than some other products you can still use to stiffen your belts and it's stiff though it's still flexible as you can see. It's perfect for making a crisp structured vintage style belt and is machine washable and dry cleanable so you can treat it however you clean your dresses. Like I said, it's not that easy to find belting these days, but I'll link all the suppliers I found so far in the description. You can also still find vintage belt making kits, which would include a length of belting and a cover buckle kit and sometimes eyelets too. But this obviously doesn't help you if your waist is larger than the kit or if you want to use your own buckle. Belting comes in several widths, so you need to buy the width that you want your finished belt to be, and then your buckle needs to match that too. I have one inch belting, so my finished belt will be one inch tall. So I need a buckle with a diameter of one inch too. That's the diameter of the inner bar of the buckle, not the outer dimension of the buckle. The basics of this tutorial is really simple. You make a fabric tube, you slip the belting onto it, you add a buckle, and you have yourself a belt. Here's how to do it. Start with your waist measurement and add an extra six to eight inches for the belt tail. I tend to like mine a little on the short side because I don't use a belt loop. This will be the length of our belting and later our fabric piece. So cut the belting in this length. If you're using belting from a purchased kit, like a vintage kit, it'll have a bunch of folds in it from storage, so give it a good press first and then cut it to the appropriate length. I like to finish the end of my belts with a triangular point, so at one of the short ends of the belting, draw a line a half an inch from the end and then a marking right in the center of the edge, which I usually just eyeball. Draw a diagonal line between these two spots and then clip off the triangular bits. I recommend snipping a tiny bit off the point too so it's not too sharp. Then we move on to the fabric. The long side of the fabric will be the same length you just cut your belting, so your waist measurement plus six to eight inches. The short side of the fabric will be twice the width of your belting, so twice the height of your belt, plus a seam allowance on either side. I have one inch wide belting, so double that is two inches. And I'm going with a half inch seam allowance, who knows why, since I always trim it down to a quarter inch, so I should just do a quarter of an inch, but I never do, I don't know why. So double my half inch seam allowance is one inch, so my fabric piece will be three inches wide. This is the size you'll cut in your fabric for your belt. You only cut this out of fabric once. So cut out your belt fabric. I actually have a pattern piece I've made for this since I do this so often, but for this tutorial, I'm just doing it with a quilting ruler, and I have my fabric folded in half to make this easier. You can cut the fabric on the straight or the cross grain or on the bias, whatever you want, I've done all. If you have a particularly sheer or lightweight fabric, you can interface the fabric next, though I won't be here and typically don't bother. Fold the fabric with the right sides together on the long side and pin that edge. Then you'll sew this long edge using the seam allowance you chose, so half inch for me. Leave both short ends open. Now press the seam and carefully press the seam allowances open. This is almost impossible to do for a narrow one inch belt. So my trick is I just press one seam allowance towards one side. This just helps with the fabric to lay a little nicer when you turn the belt right side out. Although don't worry about it too much since the seam is on the inside. Then if you went with something other than a quarter inch seam allowance, it's a good idea to trim the seam allowance down now. Since we're finishing the belt with a point, we need to sew that point. Fold one short side of the belt, right sides together still, so that the seam is centered. Mark a line about a quarter inch away from the raw edge and then half an inch away from that. Draw a diagonal line from each outer edge of the second line to the first line. You're basically drawing the stitching line, which will form the triangular point. You sew along the two diagonal lines. Now sew along those marked diagonal lines. I like to use a smaller stitch length, especially at the point. So sometimes I change to a much smaller stitch length for just the point. 
Then press the little pointed end and trim the seam allowance for the pointed bit. Time to turn the belt right side out. You can use whatever method you prefer to turn out a tube. I happen to have a handy device called a fast turn. This set is from I think the 80s and oh my god, it's worth its weight in gold to not have to turn using that little clip on the end of a long wire thingy. I hate that thing, but you know, it works for many people. I can't really find any modern equivalent to this item, but you can find it on eBay and Etsy sometimes. Once your tube is right side out, you need to get the point of the belt into shape. I slip a metal knitting needle down into the end, but you could use a bone folder or really whatever works. It's time to insert the belting into the fabric tube you just made. Take the pointed end of the belting and with the shiny side of the belting facing you and the seam of the belt casing facing you, give it a little bit of curl between your fingers and start feeding it into the fabric tube. Because the belting is stiff, this is a lot easier than you think it'll be, which is one of the beauties of this method. And because you made your fabric casing exactly the same size as the belting, it'll fit nice and tight and look super professional and crisp. But giving the end a curve as you feed the belting into the tube helps make this go smoothly. You'll see when you're done, you'll have more length of fabric than you started with at the end because of all that shoving and stretching the fabric a bit. And that's perfect because we'll trim that a bit and tuck that under when we sew on the belt. When you're done, spend a minute to align the seam line on the back side of the belt, then give the whole thing a good press. After all the handling, the belting can be a little bit misshapen, so we want to give it a good press and then coax it back into its natural curve. If you want to, feel free to top stitch your belt now, and here's one where I did that. By the way, if you can't find belting online in your area, you can always insert something else to stiffen it like waistband buckram or polyester horsehair braid or needlepoint mesh or use a heavyweight interfacing or even two layers of interfacing. But you won't be able to feed it into the tube, so you'll need to close the tube around it. One way to do that is to instead of sewing the belt on the long side with the right sides together, press the fabric in half lengthwise and fold the seam allowances in and insert your stiffener if you're using it, then top stitch around the belt to sew it shut. You can sew it by hand too if you'd like. Time for the belt buckle. We have a few options for belt buckles here. You can use a belt slide with or without a prong or make a matching fabric covered belt, which is what I'm going to do for this one. I'm going to use a buckle kit from Maxant, but you should definitely check out Serena's channel, Serena, because she has a great tutorial on how to make your own fabric covered buckle without a kit. I'll link it in the description. This cover buckle kit that I'm going to use is pretty easy to use. It comes with a template that's sticky on both sides and covered with paper. Basically, it's a double-sided sticker. Remove the paper from one side only and place it sticky side down on the wrong side of your fabric after deciding where on the fabric print you'd want the buckle to go, if needed. Then cut around the outside of the template to cut it out. In the middle, you'll cut out that little long skinny bit too. You'll see then there are four scored lines and you carefully cut along those lines too. Now peel the backing off the other sticky side. If this is a little hard, you can use the edge of a knife or something if you need to. Place the larger of the two pieces of the buckle face down on the template so the bar is in line with the long skinny bit you cut out. The other piece will be inserted in the back in a minute. Then start folding all the little short bits in and then the outside edges, being somewhat careful around the corners. I usually use a pencil or a knitting needle or something to push those in really good. Once you're done, press the smaller part of the buckle insert into the larger one, covering the fabric. You'll have to squeeze a little bit to get this in at this point. If I have a hard time, I use a little scrapbooking hammer to carefully pound it into place. And now our buckle is finished. Let's attach the buckle. Depending on how much your fabric stretched, on the open, non-pointed end of the belt, you can cut off all the extra except about half an inch, which we'll use to tuck under in a minute. We're just going to feed that open, non-pointed end of the belt through one side of the buckle bar and back down through the other side, about an inch or so. Now if you have a belt buckle with a prong and you're going to use eyelets, you'll need an awl or other sharp object like a scrap hooking hole punch to create a hole for the prong and the eyelets on the other end of the belt. You'll still fold the fabric over the buckle depending on how it's shaped, so check and decide where you'd like the hole. I recommend using some fray check or another seam sealer on the hole to prevent the edges of the fabric from fraying too much. But this tutorial is all about my fast and favorite way to make a belt, and I don't typically make belts with a prong buckle and eyelets. So I'm going to use the belt buckle for my kit, but I'm not adding the prong to it. Whether you're using a buckle with or without a prong, after you've fed the end of the belt through the buckle, 
just tuck that extra fabric under the belting and sew this shut by hand. So here's our finished belt. You can see in this method the belt is nice and structured and the belting curves back around, meaning there's no real need to add a belt loop, although you can if you'd like. There's so many more ways you could sew a belt, but this is one of the quickest and easiest ways that you can make a matching belt for your dresses and the way I make all of mine. Please give this tutorial a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon with more vintage sewing. Bye!